Hey everyone. Um, well, it's been a while since my last episode, and I really thought, what, what can I do? I thought, I really thought long and hard. Really put a lot of thought into it, you know. And what I thought I would do, I also got into mushroom foraging lately. A uh, jar of dried zellers bellites, a bunch of those. So I thought, um, when you go mushroom hunting, you kind of look for certain like types of trees or like grass areas or, or whatever to locate where these mushrooms would be. So I thought I would go out, just see what I could find and uh, build something from there. So uh, let's go out to the woods and just see what we come up with and we'll make something. So I just found this kind of mushroom looking area here, kind of low down, got some moisture, kind of baseball there. A weird hole in the ground. I don't know what that is. Oh, what? What? What is? What the hell? <sighs> Vanilla ice cream? Huh. Kind of. So kind of on the edge of a kind of ridgy area, and on the edge of grass. Ice cream. Okay. Uh, so a lot of mushrooms will find make like a symbiotic relationship with trees and I have this big big maple tree that's got to be oh it's really big and there's another one right over there and then I I just looked and I saw that's an old I think a parasol shaggy parasol mushroom which is an edible species so let's just see if there's any friends or wait, wait, wait. See, there's, there's one. There's an enormous one with a little, little buddy underneath it. Got one here. Take a look at one of these guys. Holy moly. Big. And those are edible, so that's actually like fine. Got one there. It's October 31st today. Let's see, look at those guys. Over there, over there. But when it wait, what? What is this? Hershey's syrup has been taking refuge, presumably from the rain, under this shaggy parasol mushroom. It looks like it's been used. I don't know how well, that shows up, but wow! God, look at all these though. What a spot. Should probably pick some of these. Man, they're just everywhere. So back, back there, back there. Heck of a spot. Um, okay, so just leaving this big, gorgeous maple tree here. Let's see if there's anything around. It's just a candy wrapper. Sticks. Garbage there. Sometimes um, there's a mushroom species called birch bolita, bolit, Porsche, Porsche, I don't know. Um, obviously it grows around birch trees, which aren't that common here in Washington. Just thought I'd check this out. And, oh my God, what's that? Is that oven cleaner? I don't know what I can cook with that, but that was, uh, that was on my grocery list, ironically. So we'll, let's go ahead and harvest, that came out really nice. Harvest that, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, continue to search on. Let's check in on this trail here. It's like a, a microwave. I don't use microwaves myself, but uh, I guess there's a lot of cooking that can be done out here in the woods. Okay, we've got a little, uh, looks like a couple of uh, poplar trees, I think. I'm not really a tree expert. Also known as aspen, depending on where you live. And sometimes, this one in particular, you see there's three that fork together. A lot of times those all, uh, you know, stuff falls in the middle and it kind of decomposes and it's just a perfect growth for mushrooms. So we're just gonna see if there's anything else. Oh, oh my god. A little steak, what do we eat? 
Okay, not a mushroom, but we've got fettuccine alfredo bowl with white meat chicken. Let's see. So just came around a corner on this trail here, and I, I saw these kind of trees. I don't know what these are called, but they, you know, you can see they have that unique pattern. I've always really liked them, so I'm just going to walk through and see what we can find. If anyone knows the name of these, I'd be really interested to find out. Nothing there. Ooh, that looks like a good spot. You can see a bunch of leaves kind of accumulating there. Pretty sure it'll be something. Okay, not so much. Ooh, old fence. Oh man, I need to just think there'd be something there. Right, so, wow, look at that big hollow. You can see light. That's cool. I think that's morning glory. Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but a leaf just fell on me and scared the Christ out of me. Wait. Okay. Here we go. There it is. Malted milk by Nestle. Malt powder. Okay. Well, I guess I can see where this is going. We're just... We're just an ingredient away now from making, uh chocolate malts, so I guess I'll go to some of my milk finding spots and just see see what I come up with. Um, I've searched this area already and didn't find anything, but just look at the size of these. I wear extra large or double extra large gloves. Big Leaf Maple. So named. So ironically, um, most of my milk finding has just been just in the grass off of sidewalks. And you think, I mean, how can milk hide there? It's really large, but it's it's really actually you know there's there's one right now. Let's check it out. Oh my God! So you've got November thirteenth expiration. Today is Halloween. So that's good. Here's skim milk from QFC. And right next to it, a lot of things, you know, it's the right environment, a lot of things grow together. Right by the skate park here. Um, some macaroni salad. So, looks like I have now everything I need to, uh, to make some chocolate malts. And uh, what was that? Chicken Alfredo or macaroni salad, nice little lunch. It's been a really successful forage. <laughs> everybody um, so we found our ingredients here um, very basic recipe for ingredients naturally found park here in Seattle um, basically you're just gonna put your your vanilla ice cream uh, I used to use um, New York vanilla I don't know what that is or if that's it was like from the 90s or, geez, or something like that uh, so I'm going to go with this, and then the rest is pretty much a non-measuring thing. I believe the difference between a malt and a shake is malt powder, which is uh, wheat flour and malted barley extracts, milk, soy lecithin, salt and sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. Um, three scoops of that, I, I always got credit for being like the malt making guy, like, oh you've got to make me the best sort of thing. And I didn't do it. I didn't do anything different. No research. I would just use more of this stuff. It's really great stuff. Milk. I don't know the purpose, but I always add it. Bunch of ice cream and then chocolate syrup just to flavor or to color or whatever. Um, and they're great to have right away. Obviously, they also if you pour them out of the pitcher, 
into like, you know, a glass or whatever, put them in the freezer, they're like this really thick, delicious ice cream the next day. So very uh, high calorie, they might be better if you use um, whole milk or whatever, but I think there's enough unhealthy ingredients here. Uh, so we'll get to mixing those. Uh, seemingly this whole container is going to fit in there. I'm going to save some until it melts down just for fun. Um, and then just for a rough idea of other ingredients, it's just a splash of this wild milk. About that much. It's pretty low tech. Um, three scoops! Three teaspoons! Ta tablespoons! Which are thrice as big as teaspoons. Three heaping scoops of malt powder. Maybe more if you want. The, the other secret is just, you know, taste it at the end. No one, no one cares. And just add whatever tastes like it's missing. So, uh, yeah. Uh, also, as you blend like that, you know, it's it's really scary because you can't see what's going on. You can only push this down so far. It's really nice to like, kind of measure where that is. I've definitely hit some, some metal spoons, which just kind of is uncomfortable or whatever. But if you had wooden spoons, like I used to use, which seems like a bad idea now, then you get little wood chips in your malts, which is not a nice addition. Um, and then, so just stopping it every once in a while, which, you know, eliminates the need. A lot of times, like, there a big bubble is formed and that just lets that go out and just give it a little stir. Uh, when it's fully mixed, it'll just, the top will just kind of be like a vortex going down and just let that cycle for a while. Sweet! I guess we'll we'll take a drink of one. That's that's it. They're they're really quick and easy. Some dirty glasses in there. So they're nice and nice. Oh, that's actually quite thin. Maybe that ice cream wasn't cold enough. But that's sad. Remember, don't let that freeze in there. It'll be tough to get out. Wow, tastes really good. Doesn't need any additions, but like I said, if it's not chocolate enough, everyone has different levels of chocolate like. Just add some more, mix in more. Tastes kind of lame, add more of this. Milk, I don't, I really don't understand what that's for. And you can vary around. I saw there was like French ice cream and old time ice cream and vanilla bean ice cream and I mean French vanilla ice cream. Well, it's all these different kinds, so whatever. I mean, they're all good, but if you don't want to dial it in. So I'd like to say, Thank you to today's sponsor, Bud Light. Dilly dilly. It's getting cold.